and welcome to AMA TV. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, obviously there's a, health continues to be a major news item in discussions about the, the budget and also there's been uh, the other reports about uh, the performance of the Australian health system. Mm. Um, uh, t today the uh, Council of Australian Government's Reform Council came out with a report on the performance of the health system. Uh, it seemed to show that there were areas of improvement um, in the performance of the health system. Um, what do you see as the possible impact of the budget on those, those areas of improvement that we have seen? Um, and what, you know, I suppose, what are the risks that, uh, or the, the possibility that that uh, progress mm. will continue? So the COAG Reform Council report um, that was released today uh, has some good news. Uh, life expectancy for both men and women has uh, increased uh, somewhat over the past uh, uh, five years. Uh, the child death rate uh, has also uh, fallen uh, significantly uh, and those are good things. We see the smoking rate coming down. Uh, it's still uh, over 16 per cent so there's still a lot of work to do but it is decreasing. Uh, we see that uh, the uh, incidence of uh, heart attack um, has come down by about 20% and that's uh, great news. Uh, cancer is now the leading cause of death uh, compared to other problems such as uh, heart attack and stroke uh, for the first time uh, and that reflects the fact that not that cancer is increasing but that those other um, causes of death uh, many of which are preventable have been decreasing so that they are all good uh, things. The um, there are concerns though in the report, particularly around the number of people that are overweight and obese. 63% uh, of Australians now fall into that category and uh, that's a real concern because obesity of course is linked to stroke and heart attack but also type 2 diabetes and other conditions as well. In terms of type 2 diabetes, this has really been highlighted in the report. Um, the incidence is about 4.3%. Uh, and concerningly, uh, lots of people with type 2 diabetes are not um, engaging in the sort of activities to try and reduce weight and change their lifestyle to treat the condition properly. And in fact, about a quarter of people that uh, have type 2 diabetes are yet to be diagnosed. And so that's a real concern that we need to increase um, uh, people's awareness of the condition, but also make sure that we do the preventative health care and, uh, and reduce those uh, conditions. Um, we also see in the report that there is uh, about 560,000 uh, admissions to hospital uh, which are preventable. And for the first time we've actually been seeing an increase in some of the acute preventable illnesses such as gastroenteritis, but uh, also uh, some of the other preventable, vaccine preventable um, uh, admissions such as those due to influenza where people could have had a flu shot uh, but didn't and ended up with the flu. So I think we've still got a lot of work to do in that area to try and bring down the number of preventable admissions to hospital uh, and that's key to the sustainability of the healthcare system. The number of preventable uh, uh, deaths is still very high, about two thirds of deaths under the age of 75 years occur because of uh, some sort of preventable illness and that includes things like heart attack and stroke but also lung cancer from smoking uh, and also suicide. So there, there is obviously a lot of work to do. It highlights the importance of prevention. And uh, unfortunately, under the recent uh, federal budget, we've seen uh, the National Preventative Health Agency uh, abolished. And that clearly has a very important function in terms of uh, a national strategy to address things like obesity and people being overweight an approach to diabetes uh, and all of those other things that we need to do to reduce smoking rates and other uh, um, uh, various lifestyle factors uh, in terms of improving the country's health. But I think the biggest thing about this um, report is it highlights the role of GPs play in preventive health care, in keeping people well, keeping them out of hospital, managing their chronic disease and avoiding expensive hospital care. And that's the sort of thing that we need to encourage.